What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Dion and you're watching Reptiliatus. Today we're finally doing another isopod tour and this is actually the first tour of 2021 which is super cool. So I know that there's a few of you, one person in particular, who's been very very persistent and passionate about how badly they want to have this tour happen. So listen, your work paid off. comment every video and you deserve this so this is really this video is dedicated to you friend I hope you enjoy all of you and yeah let's get right into it these are all the species that I'm currently keeping and I hope you enjoy if you're new to this channel and you like specialty pets such as reptiles amphibians and different kinds of cool invertebrates like the isopods here definitely consider subscribing down below and dinging that little notification bell afterwards so that you don't miss any of my future uploads I upload videos every Tuesday and Friday and if you'd like to support this channel further I have a patreon page linked down below as well as merch that you can purchase to support my animals and I. Awesome. All right guys, so we got some squash here, got my cutting board, knife, bowl to put it in. Let's get to work, but hold on. There's something, hmm, something isn't quite right about this setup. Let me think here. Ah, of course. Much better. All right, let me just uh, roll up my sleeves here. And uh, yeah, let's uh, get into the cutting process. Alright guys, so besides the tour we're going to be doing is offering the isopods some of the squash as well as for protein some omega-1 fish food. So I've had a lot of success offering this to my isopods. I find they do really well on it. I'll leave a link down below in the description for you to purchase some omega food if you'd like. The link provided if you choose to use it will give me a small commission for the sale just so you know at no expense to yourself of course. And then we're also going to top off leaf litter because that is a very important part of keeping isopods. You always want to have a good amount of leaf litter on the surface and you'll notice that they do consume it over time. So you do need to be on top of replenishing it. So that's kind of the gist of things. All right, guys, let's get right into it. Okay, so the first isopods we're going to be feeding are my Armadillidium T negative albinos. So let's see here okay we got a bunch of them over here they're a very very beautiful isopod as you can see they're not like your typical uh i guess more common uh, albino species japan which we'll see in a moment they're a lot lighter in coloration but yeah they're they're really uh thriving in here notice a lot of monkai now these unfortunately are dwarf whites that have gotten into the enclosure but i don't know i'm not making too big of a deal about it you do want to avoid that as much as possible because you don't want them out competing each other but they don't seem to be too big of a problem so i'm not worried about it lots of others hiding here all right so first i'm going to add some leaf litter here for them we're also going to put a nice little piece of zucchini there nestle it in and then i also want to give them some of the fish food come on don't spill it now buddy talking to myself now not too much but just a few pieces like that and they should find it perfect all right everyone next we have my armadillidium species albino japan not under there, I guess. There we go. There's one. They're very beautiful, easy to keep uh, albino form of the Armadillidium genus. I believe this is an Armadillidium vulgare form. But yeah, they're quite lovely. Right, let's put our friend down gently here. 
I'm guessing a lot of them are hiding. Oh, well, look at that. They're all out and about. And the thing is, I like there's some cool color variability between the animals. I find the younger ones to usually be a bit lighter colored. And as they mature, they get this nice, rich, dark color. It's almost like a funky version of the magic potions, which we'll see in a bit. Just in the way that there's like these blotches or swirls of color within the animal's exoskeleton. Now, I find that these animals breed quite readily for an armadillidium species. However, these ones haven't been reproducing in the last little while. So I'm expecting that hopefully soon we'll get busy, if you know what I mean. But yeah, for now, looks like we're just gonna be feeding them. The moss here can be a little bit more moist. So we will go ahead and add a bit of uh, water, spray it down a bit, and then we'll add a piece of the squash. I'm actually gonna give these guys two because there's quite a few of them. Just like that. Maybe I'll move this one over here. And then we have our fish food. Let me drop that in like so. Just like that. Perfect. All right, everyone. These are one of my favorite armadillidium species. This is the armadillidium gestroy. Let's see if we can find a few. There we go. Look at these lovely animals. Absolutely gorgeous. And there's some of those lighter ones I was talking about. You can see the difference between these two and this one. It almost has a mint green pattern. A bunch of springtails. Perfect. There's a few more hiding in there. Just lower that down gently. Now this species of armadillidium likes to be kept a bit on the drier side, I find. Of course, they have their humid hideouts. Here's a bunch more. And they're very beautiful species. Very large as well. This is arguably one of the largest species of armadillidium in the hobby. That may have changed. Um, must guiltily admit I have not been keeping up with what is new in the trade these days, but these are nonetheless one of my favorites. It's very impressive. Like, I mean, look how big those are. They're huge. Little, like, tanks. They're, they're the ohm from uh, Nausicaa, literally. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm gonna gently... A bit of bark I collected in the woods for them to enjoy some deciduous... All right, well, you know the drill. This looks like they could be using a bit more leaf litter, but first what I'll do is gently spray down the moss. Perfect. And then we'll give them a little bit of protein here. Perfect. Some there. I try to keep pellets away from wet areas because I don't want them to mold. So I prefer that they make their way over and find it drier parts of the enclosure. Some leaf litter for the animals. It's actually a fair amount in here, so piece of squash there, piece of squash under there. Wonderful. Next is another one of my favorite armadillidium species. These are the armadillidium klugi montenegros. And they are Arguably one of the most colorful and probably beautiful armadillidium species. I mean, look at these guys. Oh, there's one molting. If you didn't know, they molt in halves. Don't want to disturb them too much there. Um, but yeah, they just, they're quite beautiful. Lots of springtails running around too. It's gently going to lower this back and let him keep doing what he was doing they were doing I should say hello there beautiful oh we do have a deceased that happens we're gonna have a few die here and there it happens in a large culture but yeah let's go ahead and feed these animals now and uh water this a little bit too
perfect. Some of the areas were pretty dry, so I just want to add a bit more humidity there because it is very dry in here. They don't need it to be too dry, so. All right, I'm gonna add some leaf litter. That should be good for now. All right, friends, so this is my Armadillidium maculatum culture, otherwise known as the zebra isopods. They're doing really well. I added some fresh substrate recently, and I find that they're making quite the comeback. Just a lot more monkai now than before. But uh, as you can see, there's just uh, a whole bunch more now. Lots of monkai, lots of springtails on the moist side. Great little culture. Now, I do have some really sad news to share with you, friends. The beloved Moo Moo, who all of you grew to love, has unfortunately passed away. I did keep them here. They're dried. But unfortunately, I have to share with you that Moo Moo, the beloved dairy cow isopod, did pass away after living at least two and a half years since first found as a manka in this enclosure. So it is really cool. It does teach us that... These isopods do have the potential to individually live a really long time. When you keep them in a culture like this, there's no way to really measure that. But now we know that Porcilio Levis have the potential of individually living at least two to three years. Super neat. All right, so let's go ahead and drop in some squash. I'm gonna put some food in. As you saw, there's a lot of isopods in here. So I want to be a bit generous with this. I don't think that this is going to last very long. <laughs> and then we'll take a bit of leaf litter, add a bit extra. And I think we're doing, doing pretty well with that. Did want to spray this down a bit. Perfect. Now I haven't really been showing my lids here, but I just want to make a point out of sharing that the cut out ventilation here besides the cross ventilation in the bins i always try to make sure that it's opposite of the moist side because you obviously don't want this here drying out your moisture right away so this on the dry side then you have your moist side with the moss there if that makes sense Okay, so the next isopods we have here are the armadillidium maculatum france line these ones throw a bunch of different morphs, and they also tend to get a little bit larger than your typical maculatum zebras. So as you can see right away, there's kind of like a chocolate colored one there. It's more brindly, broken up patterns. Very, very beautiful. And I don't know, maybe it's just a coincidence, but mine have been a lot more prolific than my typical zebras. So yeah, they're doing fantastic. Okay, everybody, next we have another one of my favorite armadillidiums. These are the Armadillidium Magic Potion. Look how interesting these look. No two are the same. They're just really, really funky isopods. Whew, there they go. The culture is doing really well. Start from a really small group, and they're taking off. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and feed them. I'm actually curious if this one will start eating right away. Are you going to turn around? You are, aren't you? Watch the antennae. You'll know from that. Eh, maybe not, but give them the squash. Now it looks like they need some leaf litter and definitely some fish food. Just putting a bit of the fish food in. We'll put some around there. Maybe some here too, just like that. A little back here. And I think we're in business, everyone. Now I'm gonna take some of this leaf litter and I'll just conceal it all. Perfect. Okay, everyone, these are the Armadillidium nasatum peach form. So the natural color of these isopods is gray, whereas these ones are kind of a more peach color. This culture actually crashed about a year ago and I'm thrilled that from the small number of them that were left, they've made quite the nice comeback so it's a huge relief for me uh, to see that they're reproducing and, and doing as well as they are. <laughs> a little Nigris cristatus hanging out with them. Dwarf gray striped. Yeah, lots of Columbola. Which are the springtails. Not sure if any are hanging out here. Yes, there are quite a few. 
a little bit of mold. I don't usually worry about that too much if it's that little and the rest of the enclosure is pretty dry. Last time, I did notice something very unique. And I'm lucky I found this one again. This appears to be a very uniquely colored individual. Now, I'm not 100% sure that this is an N. Crisatus. It does seem to have an elongated body like one. I was speculating that somehow one of the T negative albino armadillidiums got in this enclosure, which I wouldn't put myself past somehow doing. But if that is actually an N. Cristatus, we have a very interesting morph that has developed in this enclosure. So we'll keep an eye on that one and let it do its thing and see if it uh, grows large and matures into the armadillidium T negative albino size or stays small like the adult armadillidium nasatum peach. Anyhow, we'll go ahead and drop some food in here and uh, yeah, let's have a look and see. All right, that should be good. Go ahead and spray a little. And these guys clearly need some new leaf litter. So I'm gonna take a bit here and sprinkle it on. And that should be good for them. All right, everyone, next we have the Armadillidium Puntacanas. And they are really nice. This is the only one that I'm crossing my fingers might actually be female. I'm not sure. I'm wondering if this is a sex dependent uh, species for color uh, because I have not had any reproduction in this culture since I got them but most of them except for one that was too small at the time are gray in coloration and as you know there are a few morphs of the um, Porcilio species that the males are gray and the females exhibit unique coloration so if that's the case I'm really hoping that this one is female so that we can have them reproduce otherwise i don't know guys we might need to try and get some more to have this culture start reproducing but yeah they're a nice little armadillidium species they're known to kind of be like the jelly belly medley if that makes sense because they can throw so many different phenotype uh, color variations so yeah that's them I'm gonna extend that spray a bit. And then because there really aren't too many, you saw so there's some dwarf whites though for competition. I'm just gonna put this piece here and this piece there, and then a little sprinkle of pellets. That should be good for them. Now these guys could use a bit of leaf litter, but I mean, there are very few isopods in here, so we won't go too crazy. Perfect. Okay, everybody, these are my Armadillidium sortidum tangerines. You can see they're brightly colored, very nice. Now, this is a bit of a success story, dare I say. This culture accidentally uh, skipped a watering day and crashed, like, really bad. Unfortunately, I lost a lot of isopods to the point where I wasn't sure they'd even make it back. But... Fortunately, I had a few little monkai that were left and they have developed into adults and I'm really, really hoping that they continue to thrive and uh, well, eventually reproduce here. So not too many of them around, but you can see that they're beautiful color morph here. And if all goes well, we will have more soon. But yeah, there's, I, I don't know, I've seen at least three or four of them around. I've seen a few that were really tiny too. So we won't mess around in here too much. I already really have. But I've just kind of been keeping that side moistened with the moss. And then providing them with a small amount of food. Just basically babying them. So that they hopefully make a solid comeback. Alright, a little piece of... Squash, a few little pellets that I'll distribute throughout the enclosure. Okay, everybody, next we have a really nice culture of Armadillidium Wernerize. And these guys are just, oh, they're exploding in numbers, lots of them. You can see that they're 
quite abundant and I may have just noticed, unless this one's about to molt, that we have a unique color. Maybe it's going to molt, but that is a very light colored individual. Kind of cool. Anyways, let's see. Take a look at all these. Very happy little pods. So we have lots of them down here. And... Uh, yeah, I think we're ready to start offering them something to eat here. So I'm putting a bit of a bigger piece of the squash in there for them. <laughs> Looks like we have someone who's already quite keen on eating. Hello, buddy. Look at them go. Wow. Very eager. <laughs> okay, and then I'm also going to drop some pellets. Decent amount of them in different parts of the enclosure here. Hello, friend. All right. Oh, look. That guy's like, you know what? I'm going to swap the squash for one of these pellets. Good choice. Good choice. Perfect, guys. Humidity is good. We're ready to move on. Okay, everyone. So we're officially moving into a new genus. This is the Armadillo officinalis. Greece locality. So this species is really interesting. They kind of look like giant Armadillidium vulgares, but you will see that the morphology of their kind of like head is more unique. And right away, you also now get to see if I can just get this leaf out of the way that I do have a more, I guess, unique phenotype uh, or genetic morph that has popped up in this culture. That is the only individual I have seen that looks like this so far, and I'm desperately hoping that it'll pop up more and we can isolate some of them. But look how beautiful that isopod is. I really hope we get more like that soon. But yeah, like I said, friends, these are big. Like, they're a good size isopod. Uh, that one looks like he's going through a bit of a rougher shed. Oh, how dare you? You're not going to nibble on me. Sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> they like their protein. There should probably be some hiding in here. Yeah, lots of monkai. And, uh, well, we haven't even gotten over to this side. This is the dry side. I'm sure there's plenty under here, too. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Look at all of them. They're happy, that's for sure. Hello, friends. Yeah, these are a really cool species of isopod, and they can handle a lot of dryness. I mean, they shouldn't be left to get too, too dry, but they can tolerate it. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I actually found some of these when I lived in Israel 10 years ago, which is also kind of uh, nostalgic or, or nice to be able to keep them again. But yeah, I'm just going to gently flip that back over. We'll give this side here... A gentle spritz just over here to make sure they have a humid spot maintain it and yeah as you saw lots of isopods so they get a nice big piece of squash the seeds are harmless they can eat that too and then i'm going to make sure that we put a good amount of food in here for them well sorry the squash is food too obviously i meant fish pellets there is some leaf litter still, so I think we're good like that. All right, guys, so this is the same species, but a different locality. These are the Armadillo officinalis Spain. So these ones are not from Greece. They're from Spain. There are some differences you may notice, um, just a little bit in the coloration. And I feel like some of them are also a bit smaller. Another one of those kind of save the day success stories, dare I say, there were not very many of these left <laughs> at all, and they're making a comeback from very small numbers. So I've just been babying them like crazy, crossing my fingers, and they're slowly coming back. Lots of younger monkai, and uh, I mean, that's essentially what we like to see. So hopefully they will bounce back. In the next few tours, you might see a lot more of them. So I'm just going to add some pellets more than enough there is a bit of leaf litter there doesn't need to be more with how few isopods are in here and this is nice and moist already so it's that simple
All right, friends, so we're now moving into another genus. These are the Cubaris species Borneo, and they're very similar in appearance to the Cubaris marina, but they are a bit different. And these, as I said in the name, are species of Cubaris that are from Borneo, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, they're beautiful little isopod. I would definitely recommend them as a beginner if you are wanting to get into the Cubaris genus. Uh, they're very easy to keep, pretty prolific. I find a lot of my adults will hang out on this piece of wood where it's a bit drier. And then a lot of the monkai are usually hiding in here in the substrate. Hello, friend. Anyhow, good numbers all around. Let's go ahead and give them some food. I find that they really appreciate the protein, so I'll be rather generous with the pellets here. And then also the good size a few pieces of food because they really do have a mean appetite. I'm also gonna put a good amount of leaf litter in here because they've decimated the leaf litter in the enclosure. So should be good like that. Okay, everyone, these are my Cubaris orange tigers. They're very prolific, really cool looking isopod. I say very prolific and lift wood and there's like nothing under it. Well, here's one. You can kind of get a, an idea of what they look like. They're very, very beautiful species. Very polymorphic, you're about to see. Uh, we'll get to the wood that's up against the ground where I'm sure a lot more of them will be hiding. Oh, here we go. <laughs> this is, I believe, a Spanish armadillo officinalis that ended up in here. The only reason I don't remove it is because I don't know for sure that that is the locality and I don't want to mix things up. So I'm not letting it go back in with the others in case it is actually from the grease line, if that makes sense. But take a look at these, everyone. Once I get more adults, I mean, there's a good amount. I really want to isolate the ones that are this brilliant in coloration, like this big orange one here and try and make a brighter line of them and just really try to selectively breed them out to be as bright as possible. Uh, you can see there's some that are really dark and gray, but man, <laughs> that animal, for example, is just incredible. This piece of wood will probably have tons of monkai under it. This piece of decaying wood probably has, yep, lots of them too. So some more of the more orange, deep colored ones. They're just gorgeous isopods, really. Just really, really nice. So let's go ahead and feed them. They need a lot more leaf litter. As you can see, they really ate up all their leaf litter. Uh, but first, let's go ahead and give them some squash. And there's a lot of isopods, so they get a lot of food. And I'll put a bunch of pellets here too for them. This will honestly be gone within two days. I kid you not. They have a ravenous appetite. Okay, and then lastly, gonna put a good amount of leaf litter all over everything too. And uh, yeah, I think they're ready to roll from here. Okay guys, next are my Cubaris Pak Chong. If I'm being honest, I'm a little worried because these guys haven't really been taking off at all. But I mean, there are a lot of them. Hello, little friend. Well, no, there aren't a lot of them. There are several of them. There are some Nagaris Cristatus and I guess Dwarf Whites in their enclosure, which yes, does add a bit of competition. I was thinking about moving them out into a new enclosure. There's another one. I've seen a decent amount of Monkai in the enclosure here. So I don't know, I might move the adults out and kind of pick the Monkai out as I find them. Might not be the worst idea, actually. But yeah, this is them. <laughs> so I will go ahead now and offer them a little bit more squash. It looks like they have a dried piece left over from last week or something like that. I will put that in there and then a little bit of pelleted food. Perfect. Next we have the R13 duckies, I'm not sure if these are Mirulanella species or not, but that's what they look like. They're either Cubaris or Mirulanella, I don't know for sure, but they have actually been doing okay. There's a decent amount of them, usually lots of Monkai around too. Hello, friend. 
don't want to mess with them too much. They're probably one of the rarest isopods I've ever kept. I don't really know if anyone has them in Canada. I hope so. Um, but yeah, I try to leave one side a little drier for them. And then when they want to, they can just kind of retreat to the moss. So if I lift this, you can see there's some over here too and down there. And yeah, I think a lot of their monkai just kind of hide in the deeper substrate. So let's go ahead and give them a little piece of the squash. Something like this, let's say. And then just sprinkle a few pieces of the food like that. Next is an interesting species. This is the Silisticus convexus. They're a neat little isopod. I think a lot of them are hiding in the humid area here. Oh yeah, there's one. And these guys kind of roll up into more of a teardrop shape. You can see them hanging out here. Yeah, there's some too. Now, the whole thing with the Magnificus, we have one left. Uh, I may try and source some more, but unfortunately, out of the three that I had left, only one survived, so I'm just letting him live in here. This was their former enclosure, and a friend gave me the um, Silisticus, so I moved them into here. So we'll go ahead and sprinkle some food in for them, and leave them a small piece of squash. Perfect. Okay, friends, we are now getting into the Porcilio genus. So these... <laughs> These are the remnants of dried minnows. No, uh, while well, these are my Porcilio Expansus white, finally, there's one. They're a really nice isopod. Very popular, just for the large size and awesome coloration. So check these out. Looks like a lot of them are hiding in the humid side, which definitely needs a spray down. But yeah, they're just an absolutely gorgeous species, as you can see. So I'm gonna gently put this back and if we go through here lots of them hiding in here so we'll gently set that there move that there and uh i'll be putting a piece of squash maybe even two because there aren't that many in here really i mean what am i saying because there are a lot of isopods in here put lots of pellets in too but for now i'm just gonna gently spray this side I'm going to go a little bit on the dry side too. That dries out really fast anyways. But yeah, this spot definitely needs to be moistened. So around the edges, so the soil is moist, should be fine. And then, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and add lots of pellets because these are very uh, protein-hungry isopods. They love it. Uh, they really do like the dried fish, but I'm sure they'll appreciate these too. Next, we have one of my favorite species in the Porcilio genus. These are the Porcilio flavomarginatus, and they're really cool. They're actually pretty prolific, and they move really fast too, which is kind of interesting. I find them pretty active. They kind of remind me a little bit of a Mirulanella species, but yeah, they're doing really nice. Good sized adults all around. Probably gonna find some under this piece of bark. I'll just gently move this. I'm always scared I'm gonna accidentally crush somebody, which I obviously don't want to do. What are you doing there? Imposters. Yeah, there's a big group of the adults. So what we'll do first is spray down a little bit their moistened moss there. And then we're gonna top off some of the leaf litter and give them a delicious dinner. piece of squash lots of little pellets and I'm gonna be pretty generous with the pellets because there are a lot of them hiding under the wood that we did not see so I know they're gonna get to these in no time hi friend <laughs> all right guys okay everyone so these are my Porcilio Hassi lights now, unfortunately, I literally have two males. It really sucks. I may very well try to get some more eventually. It, it's not really a priority to me, to be honest. Obviously, I'm gonna love and appreciate and try and keep these guys healthy and happy. Uh, they have a moistened moss side here, but Porcilio Hassi really does like it to be a lot drier than a lot of other species of isopod. 
those large Spanish species like their dryness. So small piece of squash, you know the drill, a few pellets, being a little overly generous there, but they deserve it. And that's all they get is enough leaf litter, Porcilio Hassi light. All right guys, so the next isopods we have here are just standard Porcilio Hassi. You can see here we have a large female and a male over here who's looking quite nice. He looks like he's about to molt. And there's one of the larger juveniles. And then we have a little group here as well of a larger juvenile monkey. So I think after some time, these Hassies will make a good comeback. I did struggle with these guys at the start. I really underestimated how dry they like to be kept. Despite that, there are a few individuals hiding here on the moisture side. But as you can see, yeah, the soil below is quite moist, but this moss has dried out a lot. So that's probably why they're actually comfortable hanging out there. So yeah, they're doing really nice. We're gonna go ahead and spray their moss a bit. Some of the squash, we'll put a piece in here for them. That should be enough. And then we're going to, of course, and then of course we're also gonna give these protein loving isopods some fish food. So we'll sprinkle that around here and that's perfect. Okay, so next we have the Porcilio Hoffmanseggi, or Hoffmanseggi, that's how I at least pronounce it. These are, if not the largest, one of the largest Porcilio in the hobby. Um, <laughs> see what I'm saying? That guy's huge. And a prime example of the Europods on the tail or end of the body. Uh, here's a nice female for comparison. So you can see the difference. But yeah, there's a lot of adults here. Uh, mine definitely reproduce seasonally. So I'm hoping that I'm going to start seeing some monkai in the next few months. But we'll see. Things have been a little cooler in the reptile room, which might naturally kind of stimulate a wintering period. Uh, but yeah, here's some younger ones too. Uh, there are some Negris, Cristatus, and Dwarf Whites. Lots of springtails, which we like to see as usual. But otherwise, as I always say, they're doing fantastic. Lots of males, though. It's important to give these guys a good amount of territory because if they don't get it, the males can be a bit aggressive towards one another. So keep that in mind. By territory, I mean lots of different pieces of bark. So each male can kind of take over a spot and say, hey, this is mine, you know. It's, but it is quite fascinating to see these little arthropods behave that way. I'm just going ahead and dropping in more of the food. I'm going to put one more piece of squash there. I really don't feel like they're that fond of the leaf litter, so I don't go too crazy with that. And this is their moist side. I only spray this area here, literally, and that's it. So we'll see how they respond to this, and then uh, we'll be good to go. Okay, everybody, the next species we're going to be looking at are the Porcilio lavis. And the first morph of the species we're going to look at are the dairy cows here. Funny enough, that's essentially a white that we could isolate and put into that culture. But we'll get to that soon enough. Now, these are a classic stable for everyone. If you're thinking about getting into isopods, I always recommend the dairy cows. Very hardy animals. So hardy that you can feed them with your own body. Just kidding. I know that didn't hurt at all, but I wasn't actually kidding. I should say it because they actually were nibbling on me. But yeah, they're, they're just a very hardy isopod. They can tolerate a lot more humidity than some of the larger porcilio. And they also don't necessarily not prefer it. So I usually do kind of a nice enclosure with lots of bark, leaf litter. There can be some drier spots. And then of course, a more humid area like here with uh, a decent amount of moistened moss. So by now, I hope you know the drill. I'm gonna go ahead, spray down this area here. Give it a good spray down. And I always try to measure like the level of humidity through the sides of the container, right? And now there are quite a few isopods in here. Um, I'm sure a lot of monkai are hiding in the substrate as well, as you can see. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and be a bit generous with the squash and put a piece there, another piece there. And then I'll take a nice 
sprinkle the dry food and really put it all over the place like so. They could definitely use a top off with the leaf litter, so we'll go ahead and do that as well. And voila. Okay friends, so next we have another color form of the Porcelia Lavis. Actually, that's just wood. <laughs> but these are the Porcelia Lavis Orange. So here we go. Very cool. Same species as we just saw with the dairy cows. Except these ones are nice orange. So if you're looking for something like the Magnificus that gets nice large size, bigger than your typical orange scaber, which we'll see shortly, go for these because they're so pretty and hardy. And they get to be a really good size and are quite prolific. I'd certainly recommend them. Let's go ahead and spray down their moist area over here. Oh, sorry, friend. Yikes, I'm not in control with this thing. All right. Okay, so I got a nice big piece of squash there. Some food that I'm going to sprinkle around. And a good amount of leaf litter. Should be good. All right guys, so these are the Porcilio Lavis wild type. Now these ones you'll notice are hanging out on the egg carton over here. Uh, there is some mold growing on this. I'm probably gonna swap it out, but they don't seem to mind at all clearly. They're nice Porcilio. Um, there is speculation that they're an actual different species altogether because Weirdly enough, you can't cross these with the dairy cows or the oranges. It just doesn't work. Yeah, that's kind of curious. They go by the Porcilio Gray or Porcilio Wild type. They're just pretty. They're like an interesting shape. They got that typical Lavis shape. More natural gray wild type colors. Go ahead. Give them a few pieces of squash. A good amount of uh, pellets. Perfecto. Okay, lastly for the Porcelio Lavis, we have the Porcelio Lavis White. So by selecting the dairy cows that have the least amount of pattern, you're able to create a culture that produces very low pattern animals. And yeah, you, you end up with these. Like that is a prime example there in the middle. Some of these do have a bit more pattern that I'd like to see. Uh, but yeah, it's essentially how you get the Porcelio Lavis Whites. There's a whole group more. Very beautiful. They look really cool. It's like almost like a cookies and cream kind of pod. As you see, there's a lot of them. And so because of that, we're going to give them lots of food. So if you see, I can drop all this in here. Watch how quickly they go for it. They love their protein. They're like, oh, oh, food. Like, look at this. They're already having a party down there. They're like, oh, uh, hello, food time. This one here is grabbing some too. I guess I scared them. Yeah. Anyway, the point stands. They love their... Yeah, go, 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 go. <laughs> Take your pellet and run. Woo oh, that's hilarious. But yeah, they love, they love their protein. We'll go ahead and give them some squash. Gotta eat your vegetables. Gotta eat your vegetables, kids. And then top it all off with some leaf litter. They won't even know what hit them. Because they'll be eating it too soon. What a feast, eh? I wish I got this kind of food all the time. I mean, well, no, not literally. I don't want to eat leaf litter and fish food with squash. But what a variety is what I'm saying. I take good care of these guys. Okay, everyone. So these are actually one of my favorite Porcilio. Check these out. These are the Porcilio Ornatus High Yellows. And I do have a few that are... Uh, throwing or producing offspring that appear to be like the chocolates but man they're one of my favorites they're so cool looking I mean the color right off the bat you can see is just incredible why are they all hiding there's a few here um, they're just really really beautiful oh here hello friends you can see a bunch of them so yeah, we won't do too much to disturb them right now. So these guys love protein. Then we're going to start offering some fish food like that. All right, and then a nice piece of sweet potato right there. I'm not going to add much more leaf litter because there already is a decent amount here and there. And again, these are one of the species that really like their protein. So probably not a priority for them to be eating the leaf litter. 
All right, guys, so now we're getting into the Porcilio Scabers. These are the Porcilio Scaber Calicos. Now check out the pattern on these. They're so cool looking. Like, look at that. What's interesting about this is it is a color sex dependent morph. So any of the ones you see that look like this are female. And if they're male, they're literally gray. I just saw one there. So that's a male. These are all female. And that little dude running around is, well, yeah, a dude, a male. So yeah, it's kind of an interesting observation with this morph. Is another male, but I mean, look at these females. They just look so nice. It's a super cool morph. I really like it. I have had them going for quite a few years, so I feel like over time, it's only intensified, frankly. It just really, really produces some vibrant animals. I really like what I've been seeing. So it's a really neat culture, essentially. Give them their water. This moist side definitely needs some wetting down uh, with these guys you can really do like half the enclosure i mean a lot of what i'm spraying right now will dry up but this side really needs to be holding the water for a week long period so we'll go ahead and sprinkle some food in piece of squash maybe even two to be honest and yeah perfect all right everyone so here are one of the more classic isopods people keep <laughs> and an imposter again. These are the Porcilio Scaber Oranges. Very popular beginner species. A lot of people will go for these as a starter isopod. And rightfully so. Um, they're really, yeah, easy to keep. Pretty prolific. Can't go too wrong with these. Nope, definitely not. Hello there. It's kind of a neat shot. But yeah, they're doing quite well. Lots of monkey kind of around here, I guess, and a bit down the side. And then it does look like they could really use some leaf litter, but I'll put a few pieces of the squash in for them. Sprinkle some of the food, and then yeah, top it off with some leaf litter. Crumbled or not, they will get to it. All right, guys, so if you've been watching the channel um, for a few years now, this culture has been around since the start for isopods. And man, it has evolved. <laughs> like, there used to be the odd individual that was white instead of brown or, or orange or gray. And now we have these, like, Dalmatian oranges. Now we have some Dalmatians that are black. And this, whatever that is... <laughs> They're really diverse, and it's super interesting to see what kind of morphs are popping up in what I've been calling the Porcilio Scaper party mix culture. I really love it. I mean, look how dark this one is. It's interesting, for sure. Um, unity and diversity, baby. It's just a really cool example of a ton of diversity that you can appreciate and cherish. Something I wish humans would do more of, you know? So, that being said, let's feed this culture. I'm going to drop in some good chunks for them because they are plentiful in population. And definitely require the nourishment. Clearly, that did not take long. It's already a mite on there, too. Cursed mite. It's okay if there's a few of them. They kind of find their way around. Um, but you don't want too many. I mean, look at this one. It's so cool. But yeah, it's funny. A lot of them were kind of just like, oh, well, if there's this protein rich food, I'm not interested in the squash. They will be. Just give them time. See a few colimbola. And funny enough, all of this is their frass. Like, all of this is their poop. They seem to be doing fantastic. Okay, well, let's give them some leaf litter and then spray them a bit. And then I guess we can move on. And we're really getting close to the end here, guys. Look at this one. This is like peekaboo. It's pretty funny. Hey, how you doing? No? Okay, that's fine. Okay, everyone. Here we have... Huh, I say everything's my favorite, which is probably a good thing. But these are one of my favorite Porcilio species. You know this. I've said it many times. These are the Porcilio Wernerii. And they just look like trilobites. They're just so cool. 
and I'm very lucky that they've actually been doing super well for me. I mean, I produce a lot of these, as you can see. There's there's quite a few hiding in here. That one has a few little segments that look damaged, but otherwise seems fine. Yeah, they're just a super, super interesting species. They look like the spatulatus almost, but yeah, they're just gorgeous. Very beautiful isopod. Yeah, lots of the juveniles are hanging out over on the moist side. Probably spray down some of the uh, dry side. I do this sometimes. I come through here and I'll just kind of, da, 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 da. like you can see, it's really not moist at all. So we'll let some of that water seep down in and it encourages them to kind of go to the other parts of the enclosure, essentially. That should be sufficient. We're gonna give them a piece of squash. I'll put it here. I will scatter some pellets around on the dry side here. And that should be good. They have plenty of leaf litter, so I'm not too concerned about them not having enough of that. Those are them. I mean, look. Aren't they just so neat? I think they're just so neat. They look incredible. And these are all young, too. Like, they'll get bigger than this. All right. I'm going to gently set those down. There's some more there. And then we'll move on. This is the culture I call BC Local Lads. It's just a bunch of different isopods that I collected in British Columbia and sort of kept the culture going. Interesting little animals. So it's just kind of a for fun small culture. We'll go ahead and you know, lots of manka in there. We'll go ahead and moisten this spot here. It really needs a lot of moisture to be honest. Wet it down. And then I'm going to give them some of the squash and then I will give some food to them as well of course and they could probably get some more leaf litter so let's go ahead and do that too perfect all right friends here we are we're at one of the last cultures these are my Porcelianoides prunosus which are normally known as the powder blues or powder orange isopods this is what I call my party mix for these Lots of different colored individuals, as you can see. They're really cool, hardy species too. What's a little annoying about them though, is they tend to get into other cultures. And that can be obviously a problem when that happens. But otherwise, they are pretty nice, really, really cool isopods. So we'll go ahead, give them some squash. I'm sure they'll get to that very quickly. I'm going to spray down the moist side, spray down everything a bit to be honest. Then we're going to sprinkle lots of food in here because there are a lot of isopods living in this enclosure as you just saw. Normally I wouldn't do that much but trust me they're going to get to it so fast it's just it kind of is worth it. This guy's going to groom a bit of the water off of himself. Oh there are so many pellets you really don't need to try and take one from anyone else little buddy. Yeah looks like everyone's quite happy with the abundance of food available to them. And also the fresh water rejuvenating let's say oh that guy just got one too that's pretty wholesome well friends that concludes our isopod tour i will say i left out the tuberillo species borneo uh, just because i have very few of them that i find anymore and i'm not sure how the culture is really doing unfortunately it really sucks but the last thing i want to do is dig around in there just to find one to show you on the video if you're wondering where those went that's the situation with them but yeah so that means we're ending on this note wow butt to the camera are you kidding me how dare you so I really hope you guys enjoyed the first isopod tour of 2021. Let me know what you thought in the comment section. I'll tease you guys. If you wanted to stay up until the question of the day, today's question of the day comes at the end of the video. For those who are willing to endure the lengthy video, I want to ask you guys, what is your favorite species of isopod and why? I'll give your comment a heart. 
and we'll engage in a little bit of a conversation. So there we have it. I sincerely hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe as always. And if you want to see more videos about isopods, check out the link up above to my isopod video playlist. Awesome guys. Can't wait to see you all on Friday. Take care and have a great week.